Okay, so we'll do that again. Copy, paste, special value that and get going. The other thing I like to do here is I like to put in what's called day. So now we'll go day, grab that. And here's an interesting thing about Microsoft Excel when you see this here. Basically, what's happening here is Excel is looking at the format from the previous column, and it's copying that format. We don't want that. We're going to go down to Format Cells in general, and now we have 26. So it's the 26th day of the month. Let's bring that all the way down. Just double-check your work. Okay, we'll copy, paste, special value that. And now we have all this. We don't really need this data here. I don't think it's going to be very useful to us, except for maybe in a line chart, if we wanted to show chronological order. We'll keep it in case we want it, because that way we have it. And we don't have to reinvent it or download the file again or something like that or, or restore a backup. So we'll just keep it there. But knowing that we have it spread out this way, we can start to do more analytics on that, which, in fact, folks, we don't really do any analytics yet. So uh, first, we're setting up the data file. So we talked a little bit about the data file. We set it up here. And now what we can finally do is start doing like a pivot table or descriptive statistics or something like that uh, that will really help us have our data set shine. So a couple of things I like to do here is I like to do a pivot table because it's a very easy way to make a histogram or start understanding the frequency of occurrence in the data set. So we're going to go over here to A1, go up to Insert. Um, and again, we have 200 some thousand rows of data, so the file is a little slow, a little sluggish. Uh, always double check that Excel did it correctly. Uh, A through M is correct, and then all the way down to the final row of information that you have, because sometimes Excel makes a mistake, so always, always double check. So we have the makings of a pivot table here. And what I like to do is think about how I want to start understanding this data set. Do I want to understand it based on user code or travel code? Do I understand it based on origination or from? Uh, do I want to understand it based on the to location? Do I understand it based on flight type, a range of pricing perhaps, or agency? Um, let's go with agency first because I know that's going to be smaller. There's not that many agencies. There's three of them. So now I have agency over here, and I'm going to pop this up a little bit so you can see it a little better. And I do apologize. When I'm in Excel, the pivot table fields are over here, but maybe we can see it if I just drag it over here a little bit. I know it's an eye sourcing, all this blank space, but I want to make sure that you have this information as close as possible when you're viewing. So now what I could do is I could do agency again, but this time in the values, and I'm just going to bump this over. What this is doing now, and I know it's an ugly format, so make sure you change this format. It's just a pet peeve, data ink ratio, all that stuff. And basically what this is saying is, there, no, you have to be careful. There are 116,378 rows of data or observations that are attributed to CloudFi. There are 38,758 attributed to Flying Drops, 116,752 attributed to Rainbow. Okay, awesome, wonderful, great. Okay, so now what can we do with that information? Well, we can do a couple of things. We could take year and drag it down to rows, and now we can see CloudFi broken up by year, uh, raindrop or flying drop broken up by year, and rainbow broken up by year. So we could do something like that. Now we have a better understanding of the counts based on year. But what if we wanted to look at flight type? Now we could drag it down here, and each year is broken up by flight type. But you see here, if I drag this flight type up just a little bit, now I can have all the economic, and then by year, first class, but then by year. It really depends on what you want to do, what you're most comfortable with, study, and what direction. Now, I'm going to take this year, left click, hold it down, and I'm going to move it over by values. And now look what we have. We have count of agency and sum of year. That does not make sense. Why would you sum up a year? So I just wanted to show you that. You want to be careful when you drag data over to values that you're not doing sums or counts or averages where it doesn't make sense. So I'm going to drag that sum of year and I'm dragging up the columns and watch what happens here. Now I have that data that you saw before, but now I have it broken out in what's called a cross tab. So again, cross tab. I have year over here. I have it broken out by flight type and then I've got the columns, the counts. So again, I've got 
you know, I've got 5,220 in 2021 and it shrank in 2022. And so far in 2023, keep in mind, this is so critical. 2023, it has the least amount of numbers, but we also analyzed this data a little bit and we found out that 2023 doesn't have a lot of data anyway. So we want to be careful comparing 2023 to other periods. Remember what I said before, you don't know what you got till you start working on it. And that's one of the things that frustrate students a lot is they want to know A to Z. They want to know every little step they have to take and what it should look like along the way. And the fact is that doesn't do any good. You Every data set's different uh, and you've got to learn how to adapt and be resilient and have, be tenacious and have that grit. So what I'm saying here is 2023, let's get rid of that. You may say, well, what do you mean get rid of that? I mean, get rid of all records from 2023. It's the current year. We know it's incomplete. So let's grab all 2023 because we're not going to make any year over year assumptions when we know that we're not in the full year yet. So we're going to grab all this data, 6,367, and we're just going to delete it. Now, you could delete it this way, or you can sort by year and then delete it, or you could, instead of grabbing this column of date, now we can use our year column that we've already created. It'll produce the same result, but I just want to show you multiple ways to do this. Now we can grab that first row that showed up, that 795, go all the way down, right click. This will take a while. Could destroy your computer if you're running other programs. It will take a while. Um, but on my computer, I have a gaming laptop, an HP Omen. So it's pretty smooth, pretty fast. Use our GPU. Um, and I'm able to do that. Make sure you hit the clear button. And now your data is back. Now, if we go back to that pivot table, and this is very critical, a lot of students miss this. The data didn't change, even though we deleted information. So we have to go up to Analyze, go to Refresh. And now we got rid of our 2023. The totals all changed. But we don't have 2023 anymore because the data set doesn't have it. Now, here's another pet peeve and it's lack in professionalism. So we want to put in Pivot Table, Agency, and year, okay? That's much more information than sheet one, than having a title of sheet one. Now I can say, okay, pivot table, the flights by agency, so the flights, agency, and year, okay? So that is much better information for me to swallow and check out than before. Okay, now let's try and make a chart out of this. So we're gonna go up to analyze, pivot chart, which folks pivot, Charts are different than the regular charts that you might go up to insert and click on. Make sure you're using Analyze under the Pivot Table Tools. Pivot Chart, we'll probably do a column chart here just to show you what it looks like. It's not the best kind of chart, but it's an option for us to look at to better understand our data graphically. Okay, so now we have our data. Um, one thing that's a pet peeve of mine, folks, and if you're a student of mine, you will lose points on this, and I've said it before, you need to have a good title, but these field buttons add no value to your user. In fact, if your user clicks on this and then they accidentally click something here because they're not educated, they're not a data science person, they're not comfortable with Excel, they might mess up the chart. So what I want you to do is right click on these buttons, go down to hide all field buttons on chart, and it gets rid of them all. It does not only that, but it gives you more real estate, more to look at in your chart. Now what I want you to do is go up to design, quick layout, and put something together like um, this one's pretty good, you know, here. And then put a chart title. You're going to probably put something very similar to the sheet name. Flights by agency, agents oops, per year. Okay. Flights by agency per year. Okay. So now we have for CloudFi, we have economic. We have this amount. Uh, first class premium, and then we go over to flying drops, which is very in informative to me. Uh, it suggests that um, flying drops only has first class flights. Now, isn't that fascinating, folks? I know I have a lot of coffee in my re right now, but take a moment and realize that. Light bulb moment. Flying drops only has first class flights in this data set. Could you have figured that out by just looking at this pivot table? Sure. You get all this data flying around, pun unintended. Um, you could find it more advantageous to see it in a chart. Now we can color this chart, uh, make it look different, pretty, whatever. Um, you know, whatever makes sense for your company and your audience. 
be careful of color blindness, etc. Also be careful that if people want things printed off, you're not, and most people don't have access to color printers at, in the office, uh, you're gonna lose some of your ability. So you might wanna just keep that in mind that you wanna keep this for presentation purposes. Now I'm not gonna go through all the techniques to you know, like right clicking and go down to pivot options and clean this up or go over to format chart area and do all kinds of, you know, stuff over here. Um, not going to not gonna do that in this video, but just know that uh, there are ways to clean this up, make it look better um, as well. You can change colors. Uh, you know, I'm tempted to actually do it because it's just, I just don't like it when people just use the um, defaults in Excel. I think it's, it's kind of lazy, uh, but probably because of ignorance, like not realizing the importance of sprucing this up, uh, putting a black border around it, making it look prettier. Um, the other, but what I want to show you, just because it's quick, is you can actually insert text boxes in your charts. So click on text box, get this button here, and now you can put a note. Flying drops as first class flights, you know, and you're going to want to change the font size. This is what I didn't want to get into. I didn't want to get stuck in the, the, the mud here, but now I've got some information that moves with my chart. Okay, so very cool stuff here uh, to get us going.